So just to reiterate, uh, so what would be the right way now? Uh, what to do in a data recovery situation uh, when the, for instance, when operating system gives you drive access error, okay? So your client brings you a laptop or, or it, ha it happens to you. The first thing to do is for the system to shut down immediately, okay? Because again, the same thing that uh, operating system is doing with mounting, it may do with unmounting the drive. So basically, as soon as operating system identify any problem with the drive, it may start file system repair, it will start writing to some logs, to, to file attributes, to, to lots and lots of things. So uh, you should just, if, if this is desktop computer, just unplug it from, from power. Okay, just force it, force it somehow to shut down completely because any time uh, you leave operating system working on a bad drive, it will be killing, killing, killing at the drive. Okay, so that's, that's just how it works. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing you shut down, then you uh, launch uh, DeepSpar RDD utility from a bootable USB key because you have a computer now, right? It's, it's part of, okay, you, you plug in our USB key and boot from that USB key, okay? And diagnose what type of issue the drive has. So it gives you now the right way to, uh, to handle all those situations. And then you will see whether it's, it's data, disk, or drive level issue. And if this is a serious disk or drive level issues, outsource it right away, okay? So, uh, so it, at least you will not harm that drive, and, and you will save your time, right? Because whatever you would do with it, you would not be able to get data anyway, okay? If this is drive level issues, you, you need professional tools. <clears throat> if the drive has or data level or insignificant disk level issues, uh, then deactivate MBR, and then create an image of the drive using any software imaging utility, okay? <clears throat> and only then process that image with data recovery software to retrieve necessary files. So that's a step-by-step -step approach, and, and this even without buying anything, okay? So that's why I'm really uh, kind of uh, asking you to, to kind of feel this process, okay? And, and apply it, it's very straightforward, it gives you plenty of control, uh, it gives your customers trust, right? Because now you will not be killing the drive unnecessary. You have tools to actually uh, diagnose it, to understand what actions would require to, to recover data. And the last thing to note, never leave the drive powered on, okay, and idling. Uh, and this is rule for, uh, for professional data recovery industry also, like almost like number one. Why it's happening, uh, every drive has so-called offline scanning processes. So basically when the drive is powered on, and does nothing, when host doesn't communicate to the drive, drive starts scanning its own surface. Drive itself, okay? It just starts uh, scanning surface uh, just to identify how, you know, the, the state of its surface, whether there are any bad sectors. If there are bad sectors, it will try to remap them. So it's, it's a huge process. And if you just leave it powered on, uh, idling, uh, it, it will die also. Pretty much always. It's just a matter of time. Okay, so that's just a rule. Also, uh, never just leave it powered on. If you powered it on, run whatever you're planning to do with it. Okay, usually it's 20, 30 seconds. So the drive identifying its idle mode, 20, 30 seconds. If you powered it on and do something, then everything is fine. As soon as you start executing anything on the drive, after 20 or 30 seconds, the drive will start its own scanning process and, and hitting all those bad areas and do you know, bad things to, to itself. <clears throat> okay. So this is the right way. Now, uh, just a bit more, uh, why imaging? Okay. I, I, as, as you see in the process, I recommend image the drive. So why uh, we would do imaging? Well, first of all, it's basically to handle drive and uh, drive read errors separately from logical errors, right? So if you just run data recovery software on it, data recovery software, again, intended only for the purpose of uh, rebuilding corrupted file system structure. It has nothing to do with, 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 disk, with handling disk level issues. So every time you run uh, data recovery software in it, it will try to read something and uh, it will not get access, it, it will not be able to release the file tree, for instance, and you don't know what is, why is that. 
Uh, is it because of the data problem, okay, logic, data level problem, or is it because of disk level problems? So that's why when you run disk imaging utility, you will handle read errors first, okay? So you're just reading block by block and, 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 and creating the image of this drive. After you create an image, then you can run how many software utilities you want. It's completely safe because you're working on a healthy drive. But you are separating the problems with read and the problem with logical. Otherwise, as soon as you start that recovery software, you, you again, you don't know what's happening. Is it still bad sectors or is it the corruption of, of a logical system? Another thing, it's much safer. Because uh, if the drive fails on you during the imaging process, you will have at least partial recovery, right? Because when you run data recovery software, uh, and even if it leaves the files, and you just didn't have enough time to save those files, and drive crashed on you, you lose everything. Even the file tree, everything, right? And if this is imaging, then if the drive will fail on you during the imaging process, whatever has been imaged, already imaged. And you can still run that recovery software on that image and maybe able to recover something. Right? So that's much safer way. And, uh, and also because with imaging software, it only usually access every read block once. Okay? So it read it, it cannot read it, skip, continue, next one, next one, next one. And data recovery software will try and retry and retry it because it's, it's using, again, through operating system and it doesn't know whether it's, a, it's just a healthy drive that for some reason doesn't give you data or, or because of disk level issues, okay? <clears throat> And, and uh, well, minimize harm to the drive. It's, it's uh, self-explanatory, right? So, so that's why the general rule, you would scan by using RDT utility first and see if everything is green, then you can proceed with, uh, with data recovery software. Is there, if, if you have a very occasional red, like maybe, I don't know, three, four, five maximum during all your scanning, well, it's up to you. You can still proceed with data recovery image, uh, imaging tool, but it, it, it depends on how long time it took for the drive to respond, but that's bad. Because, because again, during this scanning process, you will not only see how many sectors are bad, but you will also hear the response of the drive, how bad shape the drive is, okay? As soon as you hit those red sectors, you will see some drives may start clicking or you know, making all those crazy noises, and, and that's, that's really bad. And some drives may just give you red, 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 and, and it's okay. Because uh, if, if you remember, I was talking about soft bed sectors and, and hard bed sectors, right? It could be just soft bed sectors, and then there is no harm to run that recovery software on it. If you see more than three, five, like 10, 20, 30, you can still go to, to software imaging, deactivate MBR, and do software imaging. If you have more than that, then you would need, you would need uh, hardware imager, okay, to handle those issues. 